ഡോക്ടർ നാരായണൻ പ്രസിഡന്റ് ഐ എ പി കേരള ഡോക്ടർ അംബുജ മേഡം പ്രസിഡന്റ് കെ ഫോജി ഡോക്ടർ ബാല സെക്രട്ടറി ഐ എ പി ഡോക്ടർ വേണുഗോപാൽ സെക്രട്ടറി കെ ഫോജി ഡോക്ടർ നിഹാസ് സെക്രട്ടറി ഐ എ പി കോഴിക്കോട് എവരി ഇയർ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദി ബ്രസ്റ്റ് ഫീഡിംഗ് വീക്ക് ഒബ്സർവേഷൻ വി ആർ കണ്ടക്ടിംഗ് പ്രോഗ്രാം ഫിസിക്കൽ മീറ്റിംഗ്സ് വിത്ത് ഗൈനക്കോളജിസ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് ദിസ് സ്പെഷ്യൽ സിറ്റുവേഷൻ വി ആർ നൗ കണ്ടക്ടിംഗ് എ വെർച്വൽ മീറ്റിംഗ് ആക്ച്വലി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് planned yesterday when why i asked ambuja madam whether we have to conduct a program today she kindly consented that yadare budhimutta parnilla madam parnu namukku cheyyam ennu parnu it was a petta uh, organize cheyada or meeting aanu appo i welcome uh, dr ambuja who is the president of k4g to this zoom meeting i also welcome Uh, IAP state president dr narayanan to this zoom meeting iap is organizing lot of programs during <laughs> this week and this is the third today this is the third program for iap kolikod one program is just uh, ended around 6:30 pm and we 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 had a program today afternoon for the lactating mothers as well as the pregnant ladies with anganwadi workers and uh, icds supervisors and cdpos around 2500 persons viewed that meeting live around 1000 1900 in the youtube and 600 person in the zoom platform uh, that was a wonderful meeting and actually several lactating mothers several uh, 300 to 400 lactating mothers also participated in that meeting so with this uh, gynecologist is having a very big role in the counseling regarding the breastfeeding from beginning of the antenatal checkup even before that now lot of lot of uh pregnancies are after the infertility treatment the adolescent section is also evolving as a sub specialty in gynecology as well as the pediatrics so the role of obstetrician is increasing in the arena of breastfeeding so i welcome you all for this meeting with this words i request uh, iap state president dr narayanan to preside the meeting over to you dr narayanan Uh, thank you dr ashraf uh, president of k4g dr ambuja ma'am who will inaugurate today's program dr venugopal uh, dr nikhas dr bala i think he will be joining shortly my colleagues in iap and the dear gynecologists pediatricians another dignitaries in the zoo as ashraf has put it this is the third program of iap calicut i am attending today in between in between there was another program by iap trivandrum and another program just attended that of trishu and two more programs are there at 8 o'clock so it's a it has been a learning opportunity for me by attending all these programs during this breast feeding week and especially when it is a meeting of gynecologists and pediatricians it has more importance and significance in the meeting that we had in the afternoon with the vice chancellor and the former vice chancellor the vice chancellor raised a pertinent question that is we had a breastfeeding status of 91% in 2002 and now it has drastically declined to 55% even below that of chattisburg that is it is 77% so what must be the 
reason for that. Meanwhile, there has been a lot of social reforms. Women, I mean, mothers are now given maternity leave for six months, which was not there in 2002. And a good number of state of the art ho uh, hospitals have come up. There are more number of gynecologists, more number of pediatricians, and more number of healthcare workers. But still, why this decline? It's a thought provoking, thought provoking question because it's, the answer is not that easy. And in the presentations that followed, it was made clear that pediatricians, gynecologists, and neonatologists, we have a definite role in this scenario. Why? Because now 100% of the hospitals are, one of the deliveries are in the hospitals, institutional deliveries. And one third are preterm deliveries. And most of the hospitals have neonatologists and newborn units, either secondary or tertiary care. So, especially in the case of cesarean section. Once the baby is delivered, I will not say all the hospitals, but in majority of the hospitals, baby is immediately taken to the newborn nursery and mother is taken later to her ward or room. So they are separated. And they are in their they are in different world. And I wonder whether we have the right, whether we have the right to deny the right of a newborn. The right of a newborn is to have the feeds soon after birth, to get warmth from his or her mother. These are the rights of a newborn. But we are denying that right because the baby came through another route. Most of the vaginal, vaginally delivered babies get these amenities or facilities but most of the cesarean babies do not get the facility. So, and afterwards, the neonatologist or the pediatrician are more concerned or worried about the medical problems of the baby. And the gynecologist is more worried about the postpartum problems of the mother. In between, we should admit that we sometimes forget the importance of giving early breastfeeds because it's a crowd of just pediatricians and gynecologists. I think we should have a look into that matter. Uh, when we interview these mothers, of course, it is known that most of the lactation failures happen within the hospitals, within the four walls of the hospitals, in presence of the neonatologist, pediatrician, and the obstetrician. It's a fact. If you take, uh, I do not, do not have the exact statistics, but in your practice, you will also see such a scenario. So as long as this is not going to change, we are not going to improve our present 51% 
breastfeeding rate to a higher figure of 91 or 100, which was there in 2002. I think that all the hospitals, maternity hospital, <coughs> should have something like a breastfeeding audit. Because we always write, child, baby cried immediately after birth. Like that, we should write, baby had breastfeeds within half an hour or within one hour after birth. Unless that is happening, if things are not happening in the right way, right under our nose, in the community, you cannot expect more. So, gynecologists, right from the antenatal period, pediatricians, neonatologists to take the initiative in improving the uh, breastfeeding percentage. This year, we are lucky to have gynecology association very much associating with pediat pediatric association under the presentship of Dr. Ambuja, who today came to know is the academic dean also of the university. And uh, the VC was hinting that our lactation counselor program is supported by the KUHAS in future also they'll be supporting us. And if there is an association between KUHAS, K4G, LNF, and AAP, definitely things will definitely improve. And we are all looking for such an association. Let us hope and let us work hard to improve this scenario. And let's, let this breastfeeding be, be a platform to start such an initiative. I'm very happy to have all the stalwarts of gynecology and pediatrics here with today. And uh, my hearty congratulations to Calicut branch led by Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Nihas Naha for organizing an array of programs that too with the active participation of the public. Wish you all success. And uh, Dr. Priya, wish you a happy presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narayanan. Now I invite Dr. Ambujam, President of KF4G, to inaugurate the meeting. Respected uh, President IAP Kerala, Dr. Narayanan, Secretary Dr. Balachandar, IAP Branch President uh, Dr. T.P. Ashraf, Secretary Dr. Nihas, KFOG Secretary Dr. Venu Kopal, and my dear friends. I'm very happy to be associated with my uh, pediatric uh, colleagues uh, to celebrate this uh, week of breastfeeding. August is a month of celebrations and we are starting with, a, we are having a good start with the most important uh, program that is the breastfeeding. And for the theme of breastfeeding uh, 2020, WHS put it as uh, breastfeeding, support breastfeeding for a healthier planet. It is disheartening to know that uh, the rates of breastfeeding are continuing to be uh, low uh, in spite of all our efforts. And uh, I think uh, this uh, global campaigning should address the issue with all of us together, uh, the obstetricians and the neonatologists, as well as all the health professionals taking care of the mother and the babies. And as Dr. Naren has rightly pointed out, maybe there is a rise in cesarean section rates and the babies are kept in the newborn nursery. And I think the most vulnerable group who need the breast milk is the preterms and the very low birth weight who are in real need for the breast milk. And in them, actually, there is more of lactation failure because the baby is separated from the mother. There is no doubt that breastfeeding is the best gift that a mother can give to her uh, baby. But uh, unfortunately, it is not happening as to what we actually desire. That is, we need to increase the percentage of uh, breastfeeding and we should work uh, together to achieve this. And uh, already uh, early breastfeeding is a part of the Lexia initiative, the improvement of the labor room quality improvement. And we have started it in a big way. 
And I think uh, all the institutions enrolled into this are now doing this, that early breastfeeding even from the theater. Mm -hmm. The section is uh, a baby is taken out, immediately cleaned and put on the breast. So this is happening at least in some of the institutions. And I think we should spread this message all over because uh, Kerala is one state where we have all the deliveries taking place in the institution. So uh, as uh, Dr. Narayanan said uh, rightly, that uh, we should have a breastfeeding audit also so that uh, maybe we can increase the rates. So we all know the advantages of breastfeeding uh, for the baby as well as the mother. And uh, I'm sure Priya is going to bring out the breastfeeding, revisiting the basics. So uh, I'm happy to officially inaugurate this scientific meeting on uh, breastfeeding. And I hope you'll ha all have a good time listening to Dr. Priya. Thank you. Thank you, Ambuja Madam. Now I just invite Dr. Venugopal, Secretary K4G, for felicitation. I, he already conveyed me he has some other preoccupation at this time. So he will uh, join a little late. So now I invite Dr. Balajandar. Secretary IAP Kerala for participation. After that, we will go into the session. Dr. Bala. Bala can do technical issue. Never think in the Bala will come up. Bala position. Dr. Naranan, the session like Bala, Bala, conclude again. Yeah, yes, I think that, that will be yeah. Now we are moving to the scientific session. Today's scientific session is breastfeeding, revisiting the basics. The session is by Dr. Priya. She's an assistant professor of pediatrics, government medical college Calicut, and very actively involved in all these activities. Out to you, Dr. Priya. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. I share your slide. thank Calicut IAP and AF4G for giving me this valuable opportunity. And uh, just let me try to share the screen. Yes. Go to the slide shop. Yes. So coming to the topic, uh, breastfeeding, revisiting the basics. So this, there are several slides which are full of basics. And I'd like to skip through many of the slides which have, we are all aware of. This is just a reminder of things we have been learning from the time we started MEPS. So this is a quote from Chusruta. Uh, he's in this slide, we can see that he has likened it to breast milk to nectar, which is our current slogan, that is Amnyapad Amridam Inana, slogan and diagnosis. We can see that Pamela Wiggins, who was a certified lactation consultant long back in 1985, said that breastfeeding is a mother's gift to herself, her baby, and the earth. In 2017, it was considered as the smartest investment families, communities, and countries can make by the UN. So these are all in line with the current theme of this year that is supporting breastfeeding for a healthier planet. So after a lot of effort, uh, the World Breastfeeding Week has decided to anchor breastfeeding as a climate smart decision because uh, we are more concerned about Earth as generations go on. Uh, if the objective is to inform the people between the links between breastfeeding and climate change, how formula feeding can harm the uh, planet and engage with NGOs and galvanize action for improving the health of the planet and people through breastfeeding. So we all know that breastfeeding is environmentally safe. So how does the earth matter for breastfeeding? There are few or water or land resources that are required for breastfeeding. It is a nature, nature's gift. There is no carbon emissions. The benefit is 95 to 154 kilogram carbon dioxide per baby, and there is zero waste production. Whereas formula damage, Per kilo of milk powder requires 4,700 of liters of water. That is from the time uh, the milk is harvested from a cow 
to the time the uh, last can is disposed it takes that much of water so it also creates a lot of uh, trash in the form of metals papers we burn fuels and also require plastics and other paraphernalia so that is why it has been anchored as a climate smart decision so the current recommendations for feeding we all know as early initiation at birth exclusive breastfeeding until 6 months of age introduce complementary feeding and continue to breastfeed for 2 years or longer so as sir was rightly pointing out it seems very easy because we are starting a uh, hospital delivery we are advising the parents giving them 6 months maternity leave but still the breastfeeding statistics are dismal year by year so we all know that breastfeeding is the best possible start in the life and the current recommendation in bfhs is to initiate breastfeeding within 30 minutes in nfhs 4 it was found that only 41% of children were getting breastfeeds even within one hour of birth to counter this the bpna maharashtra adopted the breast crawl the famous video which at least some of us must have seen if you have not watched it we have we have to make sure that it is available on our youtube site breast crawl video is very beautiful so the first hour of birth is known as a magical or the golden hour so uh, there are five important points to be remembered in the labor room for this hour the first point is delayed cord, cord clamping the de- cord clamping is delayed so that the baby can be dried and placed on the mother's tummy the skin to skin contact to be maintained this contact is maintained for at least 1 hour when uh, the newborn is not sick and there are no urgent interventions the newborn assessments can be made on the maternal abdomen till this one hour expires delaying non urgent uh, managements for 60 minutes for example taking a bath uh, or uh, administering drugs this can be delayed for 60 minutes if the baby is not sick and the most important and final point is early initiation of breastfeeding in the magical hour who initiates breastfeeding the baby initiates breastfeeding so the early initiation is very important because for one it avoids pre lactance colostrum is invariably become the first feed for the baby it helps in uterine contraction placental extraction and reduces maternal blood loss because of production of the uh, intestines and this results are uh, early passage of meconium results in decreased intensity of physiological jaundice the mother and baby stress levels are found to be very low in many studies and there is better mother infant bonding so the early initiation of breastfeeding is more important to ma- maintain uh, decreased stress level so that the later phase of lactation becomes much more easy for the woman so colostrum is termed as liquid gold in nutrition so it contains nutritional factors immune factors as well as growth factors so the immune factors uh, there are several of them that is what makes it the first vaccination breast feeding uh, breast milk is a complex food however it is available at the right temperature clean with no contamination and uh, naturally available special food for preterms and it changes as the baby advances in gestation it protects us from variety of diseases starting from any z in a preterm baby as ma'am ma'am was mentioning from sips in a one month old baby and type 2 diabetes and obesity as you go on in life so how does it do it so this is a comparison which we have all learned in spm we can see that the human milk contains more lactose less protein and the fat content is uh, also lesser compared to the cow's milk is this the end of the story is the lactose per controlling the lactose percentage the protein and the fat percentage adequate to give a good formula feeds so these are the other elements which we are all familiar with lactoferrin alpha lactalbumin uh, fat globule membranes haptoferrin uh, secretory iga lysozymes these are all things like uh, we are familiar with and who is a new kid on the block that is human milk oligosaccharides we can see that the composition of milk is mostly water and then there are macro and micronutrients of the solid components it is the third most important solid component that is 5 to 15 g per liter they are uh, functional ingredients of breast milk they are complex glycans which have a large structural diversity and can have different functions 
in colostrum, the concentrations of these can exceed up to 20 gram per liter and it is dropping to 5 gram per liter as the baby matures. So what do we know about them? Uh, the research is recent and we are just elucidating all the points about it. They are, some of them act as prebiotics, some of them act as decoys. They uh, bind to the pathogens, simulating the uh, attachment or adherence factors in the cells. Some act as signaling molecules and interact with the host cells to initiate defense. Some of them are anti-inflammatory and immunomodulators. Some of them have direct trophic actions on the neurological development. So we are we not yet learned all about them. So these are human milk oligosaccharides. These are not found in any formula milk. So breast milk is a dynamic fluid. The most important changes come with gestational age, stage of lactation, and even during a feed. Preterm milk is mostly trophic. So whatever growth factors should have been there in utero is provided by the nature through the preterm milk. You can see that the neuronal vascular endothelial hepatocyte epidermal growth factors and insulin-like growth factors are invo in involved in the maturation and uh, modulation of several organ systems outside the body. The composition we can see that uh, the protein percentage and the lipid percentage are higher. The essential amino acids like histidine, taurine, etc. are plentiful in the preterm milk. Whereas the lactose content in preterm milk is slightly less compared to the term baby. And this composition also changes as the baby's gestation age advances. Four milk and hind milk. The four milk is like a white milk and the hind milk is like the pallada. We can see that it is a gradual change as the mother goes on feeding. Uh, there is uh, elucidation of fat globules from the uh, active epithelium of the uh, breast and this results in increase in the fat composition towards the end of the feed. We have to ensure that baby receives both the four milk as well as the high milk because four milk is more rich in water and lactose and the high milk is what is important for weight gain because it contains more of fat. So uh, the cost. In low income communities, the effort of giving milk other than human milk can consume about 50% of family's outcome. So summarizing the advantages, which we all know, benefits to the baby, uh, benefits to the mother, and benefits to the family and society. So why breastfeeding week? Breastfeeding week was started in 1992 as a commemoration of 1990 Innocenti Declaration, which, may, which was the initiation for uh, BFHI. In 2016, it was aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals. In 2018, resolution uh, of WBW as important breastfeeding promotion strategy. The exclusive breastfeeding, but still is uh, the achievement we expect into 2025, despite all our effort is only 50%. As rightly po pointed out in the beginning, uh, the percentage of breastfeeding seems to be falling every time we take a statistics. It is definitely a natural process. Every mammal does it. So why is it so hard? It is not always easy because it has to be learned in several steps. A mother needs a lot of support. So just looking at the World Breastfeeding Trends Initiative of 2020, the statistics have just come in. India stands 78 of the 95 countries assist. Our color code is yellow. The only country in green is Sri Lanka. There are several countries in blue and uh, the rough assessment of cost to India because of lack of breastfeeding stands at about 7 billion. So these are the other parameters assessed. We can see that the median duration of exclusive breastfeeding in India is around three months. Bottle feeding is around 17 percentage. So these are all not good statistics. So we have, we have to go back to BFHA yet again. Why? Because the action taken report for our following each of these trends, uh, which is taken every three years, show that the BFHA indicator scored 0 out of 10 in 2050, as well as in 2018, whereas we scored 7 on 10 for monitoring and evaluation. We have to train the staff and uh, what to train will be the, how to train or what areas to cover will be the rest of the talk today. So going to the lactogenesis. We all know about the mammary glands. There are milk secreting cells surrounded by myoepithelial cells. From there, 
the milk is drained into the ducts, collects in the lactiferous sinuses, waiting for the baby to feed. You can see that the secretory epithelium uh, is becoming more active towards the end of second trimester. So how to put this anatomy knowledge to practice? The infant has to grasp most of the areola into his mouth. There is a peristaltic activity from the baby's tongue, which moves the milk from the areola to the nipple. The tongue actually milks the uh, milk to the back of the mouth so that the baby can swallow it easily. So it is important that during latch, the baby uh, takes in all of most of the areola along with all of the nipple. So how to ensure that the latch is good? Ensure that the mother's nose is on target with the nipple and then tickle the lower lip with the nipple. Wait for the baby to open the mouth widely and let the baby latch on. Instead of pushing the breast into the baby's mouth, it is better to ask the baby to do it. So coming to the endocrine parameters, uh, we all know about the importance of let down, uh, prolactin as well as oxytocin in uh, lactation. So we have to see that uh, the prolactin is coming from the anterior pituitary and it is important for milk production. So prolactin is uh, increased whenever the baby latches on well and sucks more. Whereas the oxytocin which is produced from the posterior pituitary is the otherwise known as the love hormone. It is uh, stimulated by presence of the baby near the mother. The sound, smell, sight, thought of the baby and is very, very much suppressed in presence of stress, pain and anxiety. So these are the basics. How do we use it? The progesterone increases the size of the alveoli and lobes so that the stromal material in a term breast is very, very less. So the breast size does not matter in lactation. Prolactin levels rise with nipple stimulation. The more the baby sucks, the more milk produced. So if you have twins and you can make them both suck well at breast, you may be able to maintain them without giving formula feeds. The alveolar cell makes this milk in response to prolactin. So do not discontinue the uh, feed or do not time the feed. Let the baby suck as long as he wants. There is more prolactin production at night. So especially in working mothers who are separated from the babies during duties, uh, we have to encourage or ensure night feed so that breastfeeding can be maintained. So oxytocin moves the milk. That is the contraction of myoepithelial cells is required to move the milk from the ducts towards the baby's mouth. So this is very, very important because in presence of anxiety, for example, lack of privacy, in presence of pain, lack of analgesia, the mother may not be able to provide the milk in her breast to the baby. So inform mother about the advantages of breastfeeding, encourage her, give her adequate privacy. Rooming in is important. Avoid unnecessary shifting to NICUs. Do maximum mother-baby contact. KMC can be very, very useful. And we should instruct the family that mother should be kept happy for a successful lactation. That is also very important. No negative remarks from anybody. You may not get milk. A small nipple or small breast. Don't first eat light. These are the common advices. Bottles, teeth, pacifiers when the baby cries. And uh, letting the mother rest because you are tired. So uh, whenever you substitute a proper breastfeed with any other feed, the stimulation for prolactin production is going to decrease. So a breastfeeding success means there is a good latch, there is uh, a good uh, moving of milk due to letdown, and there is proper prolactin production because of the good latch. So this results in breastfeeding success. Another very important point is that crying is not equivalent to hunger. Babies will cry and that is what they do. They are adjusting to a new environment. Seizures can present as cry. Pain can also present as cry. So how do we recognize whether the baby is crying because of hunger? So there are uh, early cues, mid cues and late cues. In early cues, the baby starts stirring, opening his mouth, turning to the head. So the rooting reflex may be very, very prominent. In mid cues, the baby starts stretching. There is increased hand to mouth activity. And by the time baby is really hungry, baby starts with crying. So in a crying baby, you have to calm baby and then feed the baby. So if you wait till the baby cries, the baby will not feed very happily. 
as soon as you offer the breast. So this is also very important. How to teach a mother to breastfeed? The most important thing is consistent information, which is why staff training in BFHA is so very important. Infant in mother's arms. Uh, it is not a theory class. Watch the mother, feed the baby and help. Let the mother know that she may have difficulties. Remind the mother that baby is also just learning. Praise the mother for whatever achievement she has made and provide discharge support uh, to, for persons to handle her at home. It is better to teach someone who is along, going along with her to home. Uh, regarding the most important points, we would like them to follow through. So we had to remind them that mother requires additional calories, 500 additional calories per day for milk production. And the breast has to be emptied two to three hourly to maintain milk supply. Even if the baby is sick, even if the mother is sick or baby and mother are separated, you have to empty the breast every two to three hours to maintain milk supply. So lactogenesis involves a maturation of alveolar cells. The stage one lact lactogenesis occurs in the second half of pregnancy influenced by high levels of progesterone. The stage two lactogenesis is what drives our, uh, or what is considered as the real lactogenesis. It occurs only after delivery or after placental expulsion, which results in a rapid drop in progesterone. Associated with elevated levels of prolactin and insulin, the, it will result in copious milk production. However, the stage two lactogenesis can be as late as 72 hours. So we have to wait for 72 hours, manage the mother's pain, anxiety, and provide her adequate privacy and support before declaring that this baby requires formula feeds. Another important point to remember is fat, uh, the feedback inhibitor of lactation, which is an active whey protein that is produced in the breast tissue. So when there is increased demand or increased breastfeeding, or we pump the breast, there is less accumulation of this factor. There is no feedback inhibition. That means there is more milk production. Whenever we brain, uh, drain the breast less, whenever there is more retention of milk or erratic drainage, there is more uh, feedback inhibitor resulting in a decrease in the milk production. So uh, before teaching the mother to breastfeed, we had to remember that positioning is critical. It, it requires a long time, usually 20 to 30 minutes is required. So the baby and mother has have to be both comfortable. The mother should be having a good back support. You can, if the mother is lying down, we can roll up the bed or ask her to sit in a supportive chair if she's sitting up. Elbow support, uh, she might need a lot of pillows depending on the baby's size and uh, if there is a uh, incision. Prevent back strain, if she's short, you can provide a footstool. Teach correct positioning and attachment. First of all, decide on the hold, the, the position the mother wants to use. This is a normal position. Show the mother how to hold the infant. The infant's head and body should be in a straight line. The neck should not be twisted. The facing the breast, the infant's nose should be coming opposite to the nipple so that we can initiate the latch as we saw in the earlier picture. This is the same procedure. The infant's body should be very close to the mother's body and the whole of the infant's body should be supported. So the most important point is that the infant's head and body will be straight. There should be no twisting of the neck. To check for attachment, uh, this we have seen earlier, and you uh, touch the baby's nose, the baby opens, and the nipple is inside the baby's mouth. So what, what are the points we can assess looking at the attachment? The chin should be touching the breast, the mouth of the baby should be wide open, the lower lip should be inverted and the, most of the areola below should not be visible. Uh, in the upper parts of areola may be visible. How can a mother assess this herself? The baby's cheek should be full and should not be dimpling as the baby sucks. The baby takes deep sucks with pauses to breathe. Mother can hear the baby swallowing the milk and the latch is not painful to the mother. So these are assessment of good latch and breastfeeding positions. The most common uh, hold we use is the cradle hold. So this we have already seen in the previous slide. The other breastfeeding positions, the other common one is the football hold, where the infant's head is placed under the arm, like holding a football. The baby's sub, uh, body is supported with the forearm. The hand is support, uh, head is supported with the mother's hand. Uh, this 
may be required in case of sig significant operative procedures or when the baby size is small or sometimes for twin feeding the side lying position is very useful for cesarean section uh, allows the new mother some rest and the mother lies on her side propping up her head and shoulder with pillows the infant lies down facing the mother these are the commonest three positions there are several more positions but these are the common ones we can use all tips very important uh, encourage 12 feedings per day alternate the breast that is offered first because we do not want a fil being uh, increased on one side allow the baby to nurse till the baby comes off the breast by himself aeropage is very common and burping during and after feeds is very very important to maintain a good milk supply so what are the breastfeeding barriers the most important barrier is psychosocial in addition then can be breast pathology hormonal pathology health issues in the mothers and other conditions like hiv so what are the common queries of nursing mothers we have to address this even if she doesn't ask this this is one of the most common psychosocial barriers does the baby need extra water am i making en enough milk does the baby need any extra food does the baby require multivitamins or any supplementary milk is my milk adequate so the mother's milk should be adequate for most of the babies the only two points we have to remember while thinking if the mother's milk is inadequate is is the baby having a poor weight gain or is the baby having a low urinary output a poor weight gain we can roughly remember that the baby should regain their birth weight by 2 weeks of age from 2 weeks the baby can gain about 30 g per day or 500 g every month so recovering by 2 weeks of age a low urine output is urine passing urine less than 6 times a day especially a dark yellow and st strong smelling urine and does not sleep for 2 hours between feeds so these are the only two indications where we should suspect that there is a failure of lactation so now the next slide is poor attachment because many a times even the reason for lack of adequate milk production may be a poor attachment what does poor attachment do it causes pain during feeding damages the nipple the baby tries to feed longer baby is hungry even after feed and the feeding goes on every time but results in a poor weight gain because of the pain because of the in, uh, discomfort the mother mother's milk may even dry up and if there is enough milk and this is not being let down it can be a good culture medium res resulting in infections check attachment uh, in every baby and this at this we are uh, asked to spend, spend around 15 minutes for each babies whenever a baby cries too much whenever the baby feeds very often and for a long time the mother reports no let down and the mother is not able to express her milk herself so th these times we have to check attachment <coughs> so uh, some of the problems associated with breastfeeding full breast by around 3 to 5 days after delivery when the breast milk comes in the breast feel hot heavy and hard the milk keeps flowing well that is very important so if there is normal fullness the milk keeps flowing well as the days progress the baby and the mother both become comfortable as the milk production adjusts to the baby's needs flat large and long nipples are not usually a problem and should not be considered a a uh, deterrent to normal breastfeeding we are only worried about one type of nipple that is a non protractile nipple so non protractile nipple is a nipple that doesn't stretch out when pulled instead because of the fibrous tissue because of it being attached to the stroma by fibrous tissue it goes inside protractility improves during pregnancy and in the first postnatal period so initially we were advising in the antenatal checkups uh, to stimulate the nipple and make it non uh, protractile but nowadays because of the fear of oxytocin release and preterm deliveries the uh, intervention is done in the first postnatal week in a large or long nipple the baby's mouth uh, may be small so that it's uh, for the baby to take in breast tissue into the mouth so that can be adjusted by different positions antenatal treatment is not used nowadays so we have to ensure skilled help after delivery if you go to a ward 31 we'll find that 
protracted uh, non protracted nipples are not very uncommon so for long nipples leaning over the baby uh, and letting the breast drop towards the baby may be useful as the baby grows mouth becomes larger uh, and the baby's problem will be over this is a sedin suction method which we commonly use to correct non protractile nipples so i think everybody is familiar with this i am just skipping the slide so the next point is breast engorgement uh, the cause is failure to remove breast milk well so in full breast the milk was flowing well in breast engorgement the milk ceases to flow well engorgement uh, whenever there is engorgement in the breast they become hardened there is uh, more blood flow because of the pain and the only management that is required at this stage is express the milk until the breast feels softer sometimes the mother may require analgesics then part of the problem similarly you can have a blocked duct in engorged uh, breast the whole breast acid is affected in a blocked duct there can be tender localized lump with redness causes poor attachment tight clothing or trauma to the breast again improving the milk removal feed from the affected breast frequently and massage so over the lump for evacuation of milk underneath is very very important so whenever there is uh, let uh, the milk is not flowing well there is high risk of mastitis mastitis there is hard swelling in the breast with redness of the skin and severe pain and the mother starts to feel sick and is febrile it is commonest in the first 2 to 3 weeks after delivery the commonest causes are long gaps between feeds and poor attachment whenever there is improper evacuation there is non infective inflammation followed by infective mastitis so again we go back to removing the milk uh, warm compresses analgesics and because staphylococcus is very very common penicillin resistant antibiotics are the antibiotics of choice however antibiotics alone are not enough so once there is mastitis once there is bacterial infection there is chance of breast abscess a painful swelling in the breast which feels full of fluid uh, obviously an abscess needs to be drained if possible the smallest incision can be used you can also use fnac express the milk and advise the baby to feed from the other side and uh, as quickly as possible the uh, same side can also be offered the baby for feeding next issue is sore or fissured nipple there is nipple pain when the baby is suckling sometimes there can be visible fissure across the tip of the nipple or around the base the nipple can be squashed from side to side at the end of the feeding and associated white pressure line can be seen you can see the stage 1 2 and 3 stage damages the white line is clearly visible in the last figure so what happens here the baby's poor attachment causes the baby's tongue to rub against the nipple it is a very sensitive area and results in severe pain so the treatment again is improve attachment no need to press the uh, breast you can air the breast or apply hind milk so that it heals faster another common problem is candida infection in the mother it can present a sore nipples with pain continuing even between feeds or rarely a rash in the areola in fair people in the baby there can be oral candidiasis white spots which look like milk curds but cannot be removed easily or may bleed on removal and the mouth may be sore the baby may refuse to feed not necessarily the baby can feed also the management is clotrimazole 1% solution qid for 14 days this duration and the number of times of application is very important the solution should not be removed prior to breast feeds both mother and baby that is the application of the uh, solution should be on the baby's oral cavity as well as the nipples and if it is recurrent we have to screen for underlying problems so one of the rare problems is oversupply of breast milk the baby can present with frequent loose stools associated with the poor weight gain this is because of large amounts of whole milk which causes lactose uh, and results in more lactic acid formation resulting in osmotic diarrhea and loose stools so uh, again uh, one of the treatment is to improve the baby's attachment and it sometimes it may be due to a false forceful oxytocin reflex in the mother which results in a large jet of 
uh, milk be forced down the baby's throat which is so the baby doesn't find it very comfortable to complete the feed in such mothers the mother should open only one breast at each feeds this picture we can see that the breast uh, twins are being breastfed in football hold position so this is a special situation for breastfeeding and uh, feeding can be continue uh, this has two advantages one is that the babies will get adequate breast milk for their support because of increased prolactin production and the other is that after both the feeds being completed together the mother can get adequate rest and then special other special situation we can commonly see is cleft palate in which a specific position known as dancer's hand is uh, usually used so cesarean section we have already seen that the sideline position may be useful and in hiv uh, it is not regarding the position hiv has been put specifically because there is no contraindication to breastfeeding as in the current recommendation there is no contraindication to breastfeeding the mother should be asked to breastfeed till 6 months and then suddenly baby is weaned off the breast milk totally so coming to expressing breast milk when do we need to express breast milk when the baby is too small to feed when the baby is too sick to feed or the mother is too sick to feed whenever the baby and mother are separated for any reasons uh, express breast milk is very very important for the baby as well as by the mother you can use the hand or breast pumps are nowadays available most important point is to remember that mother needs a comfortable private place where there is no queue she requires a lot of time and the breast needs to be emptied fully if you are expressing the breast milk so the hand expression first of all do the hand wash apply heat massage and stroke the breast position the fingers behind the areola and the direction of milking is towards the chest it is not the pressure is not over the nipples it is towards the chest so uh, all the quadrants can be managed in this position breast pump is a mechanical device that extracts milk from the breast uh, there are three types actually manual battery operated and electrical pumps uh, hospital grade electric pumps are available in many hospitals nowadays for uh, manual breast pump the cost is between 300 to 800 rupees the most important thing we have to remember while buying a breast pump because uh, it is a very vast topic this one point we have to remember that there are two types of systems one is a closed system and the other is an open system the difference is that there is a vacuum seal which prevents the milk from entering the tubings of the system in case of a closed system in case of open system the milk can get into other areas the milk can get contaminated the whole of the equipment itself can get contaminated so always insist ensure that it has a proper vacuum seal a pump that is being brought has a proper vacuum seal so that the equipment can remain sterile the and the choice between manual and electric pump depends on uh, several factors the most important one is the uh, duration for which they are planning to use it should be cost effective uh, if the mother plans to use it for a longer time they, we can ask for a electric breast pump it can express greater quantity of milk and is less painful however it is costly so how do we feed the baby ebm this is pallada which we are all familiar with in our newborn the uh, cups with a spout or nifty cups are used in several countries and this uh, picture shows a small preterm baby being given tropic feeds so how do you store ebm cdc recommendations are to be followed uh, for most important thing we can tell a mother in our hospital or uh, who is planning ebm for a short period is that a freshly pumped or expressed human milk can be kept for 4 hours in room temperature so that is very very important it doesn't need to be discarded as formula for uh, formula can be kept for a maximum of 1 hour only so it can be kept up to 4 hours always ensure that the mother expresses it in a wide mouth container and uses an appropriate way to feed the milk that is offered to the baby but not taken into the mouth should not be kept along with the milk that has not been offered to the baby so you should not pour back the excess milk into the a uh, container where it has been collected so these are the only two things to remember it can be stored up to 4 hours and it has to be kept hygienically so uh, sometimes we need formula feeds 
even in world breastfeeding week i need to remember everybody needs to remember that breast milk should not be a force to cause problems to the baby medical indications for supplementation is always there but before we declare that failure of lactation as a indication for formula feeds we should take adequate steps to train our staff assess positioning assess attachment and support psychologically uh, the mother as well as the family and ensure the best outcome for the mother and the baby thank you thank you priya for that excellent presentation there is a question in the chat box yeah actually sir uh, i did not deal with it because the topic was regarding yeah uh, even though even though uh, what about covid positive mothers there there Have is another recommendation uh, there is no contraindication for breastfeeding there is not there is no evidence that the virus is being transferred across the breast but uh, it is important to remember that we have to deal with the baby in a very hygienic manner so it is best that we keep the baby adequate space away from the mother even if the baby is being groomed in it is better to keep the baby 6 6 feet away from the mother then then par very difficult to feed the baby you can give express breast milk depending on the circumstances at the home or hospital as it is if it is possible for the mother to give, be given proper mask that is an n95 mask uh, do proper hand hygiene wear an uh, proper dressing and then feed the baby then it is also allowed to feed the baby normally that is there can be direct breast feeds can be given if the mother has significant cough secretions or which may be dripping onto her chest we have to remember that it has to be clean just and the mother has to wash with soap and water to sterilize the secretions and her body before the baby is being breastfed the breast milk cannot uh, be uh, transferred across the breast however it can be transferred across the environments that is the only point we have to remember mohandas anything to add on that ranjit please unmute mohandas also ഹലോ ആ പ്രിയ വളരെ നന്നായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞുവല്ലോ അപ്പോ എല്ലാ പോയിന്റും പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് വേറെ ഒന്നും ആഡ് ചെയ്യാനൊന്നുമില്ല അംബുജ മാഡം ഫോർ കൺക്ലൂഡിംഗ് റിമാർക്സ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ വണ്ടർഫുൾ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ പ്രിയ ആൻഡ് യു ഹാവ് ബ്രോട്ട് ഔട്ട് ഓൾ ദ പോയിന്റ്സ് ഓൾ ദ ബെനിഫിറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് ബ്രസ്റ്റ് ഫീഡിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ഐ തിങ്ക് വി ഷുഡ് സീരിയസ്ലി ടേക്ക് അപ്പ് ദിസ് മാറ്റർ ഓഫ് ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ് ദ breastfeeding rates and regarding the current situation of pandemic we should still encourage breastfeeding with all the adequate precautions that's all thank you so now now uh, we will wind up the session before that i i invite dr nihas the dynamic secretary of iap koi code for what of thanks nihas ഈ ടെക്നിക്കൽ ഇഷ്യൂസ് എന്തോ വന്നു അപ്പൊ നിഹാസിന് പകരം വേറെ ഡിസ്കഷൻസ് ഒന്നും ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ വൈൻഡ് അപ്പ് ചെയ്യാം ഓൺ ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ഐ എ പി കോഴിക്കോട് ആൻഡ് ബിഹാഫ് ഓഫ് ദി കെ എഫ് ഒ ജി i thank you all for coming to this zoom platform on this in connection with the breastfeeding week celebration a special thanks to ambuja madam as well as uh, dr narayanan for inaugurating as well as the presiding the session thank you all thank you thank you priya for that uh, excellent presentation i forget to mention you